Hi and welcome. I'm Holly and this is Abigail and we're the cooking family. Uh, we're going to show you some great food today and an easy way to prepare a meal for your family. But first Abigail and I we're going to give you a little farm update. Yes. So, so our garden is still producing a lot and um, so we have this is one of our lost zucchini <laughs> that got way too big. It was hiding in all the um, leaves. It was behind some jalapenos that were growing. And so, like, there's a row of jalapenos, and they're growing tall, and then the uh, leaves of the squash were covering it. So Rachel didn't find it until yesterday. It's, like, four times bigger than it's supposed to be. Right. So... That's so one of we'll the still eat this zucchini, but we might shred it up and make yeah. some zucchini bread or something. The seeds are going to be a little bit tough, but other than that, I think it's going to be great. And but then it is a mammoth zucchini. You really have to go up to the garden every day because <laughs> okra grows it's like crazy. It's a jungle crazy. up there. One day you find it and it's like half as big as it's supposed to be, and then the next day you go up and it's humongous, or you skip a day and it's like... Even we found one that was like this big and this wide or something. It was not. That's yeah, exactly. It's been amazing how much discipline the garden requires because it's kind of like once you get it all started, it's kind of hands off. Things are doing their thing, but then at harvest time, man, you gotta um, jump up there oh, yeah. and get it while it's good. This will happen. That's right. And so. these actually we found out are inedible. They're woody and they have a really bitter taste. So even using them in uh, Trim Healthy Mama shakes, it was. Uh, yeah really nasty just yeah. take our word for it so these go to the chickens um, unfortunately but at least we have someone to eat them so um, another thing that we have happening is our chickens that we got in the middle of March we were already planning to get them when COVID hit uh, but a couple of the leghorns they're white leghorns they've started laying so they lay white eggs so these yeah. eight are the leghorns, and they're our best layers right now. Yeah, they're our best so, layers. And this one is, is this a spice? Rock. It's, oh, it's a bard rock. sprinkles or sugar. So one of our hopefully soon we'll be having even more eggs because we're still having to buy a few at the store to keep up with our family's egg needs. But that's been pretty exciting when uh, Miriam, Miriam is the chicken girl. Oh, yeah. And it's pretty great when she goes out and brings in all the eggs, so it's pretty fun. Yeah. We're getting maybe three or four a day so far. Mm, two. Two? The bard rocks. So mm -hmm. stop playing. Got to get those chickens going. So anyway, uh, that's been really fun this week on the farm. And Cookie and Ginger Snap are doing awesome. Um, we're down to once a day milking. So that's a nice relief. We're not having to milk in the evenings. <laughs> so every evening we're like, yay, we don't have to milk tonight. So we just have to do the chores. But that's not bad. We just have to do the chores and take care of them. But yeah. Um, so there we go. So let's get started on our uh, wonderful creamy salsa chicken rice bowls. Um, this is a super easy meal that you can make for your family. You can even make it last minute with frozen chicken. Uh, ours is thought out today, but it's not always thought out. <laughs> um, so I'll show you exactly how to do that. And it only takes a few ingredients. You don't even have to chop up very much. Just one little onion, and Abigail's gonna show you the super quick way to do that. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the Instant Pot. I'm just going to press the button, and that kind of wakes it up. We're gonna go to pressure cook, and because we have a poultry set setting, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to poultry, and I'm gonna press start. Okay, that'll just get it started heating up, and we'll set up the time and everything in just a second. Um, okay, so here's our uh, raw chicken thighs, boneless, skinless chicken thighs. These are my favorite chicken to cook with for a couple of reasons. Um, one, chicken thighs are dark meat and they don't get dried out like chicken breasts. Um, and also, they are a much more budget-friendly option than chicken breasts. So for me, it's a win-win. You can find these on sale uh, at your local grocery store pretty often and uh, it's just great it's great uh, meat for the family a great protein option for the budget and for the taste um, and you can if you have only frozen ones you can put them in the other day we even put in a whole block of frozen ones 
that had been um, on one of those styrofoam trays and it just got chucked into the freezer when we got home from the grocery store. And so we thought it enough to peel the styrofoam off and then we pre-cooked it for about um, five minutes under pressure and then we were able to open it up, pull it apart, and then proceed with this recipe like we're about to. But if you have the individually quick frozen pieces of chicken, then even better, you can just put them in just like this. They'll be hard, but it's no problem. And then we're gonna go ahead and add our pressure cooking liquid now. We're gonna do one cup of water. And we're putting it in now so that we don't wash the spices off the chicken. Um, we don't want our chicken on the trivet this time because we want our chicken to cook in this sauce mm -hmm. and just uh, infuse the chicken with so much wonderful flavor. Do you need um, a measuring spoon? I need a measuring spoon. Elijah's gonna grab a measuring spoon. He's a great assistant. Um, okay, so these are chicken thighs. If you're gonna use chicken breasts, that's great, but you're, I really prefer to cook chicken breasts on low pressure instead of high pressure. I find that uh, the chicken keeps its juiciness a little bit better and the co pressure cooking time for this recipe is 10 minutes for the chicken thighs. Go ahead and add two minutes if they're frozen. And I like to do eight minutes for boneless, skinless chicken breasts. So if you're gonna do frozen ones, add two minutes to that and make it 10. Is this okay? That'll work. Okay, Okay. this is one tablespoon. So we're gonna do one tablespoon of our magic flavor dust. Uh, we showed you how to make that a few weeks ago and we're just gonna sprinkle that all over the chicken. The magic flavor dust is a great uh, quick shortcut in the kitchen uh, for your family. This has um, the recipes online at our website, thecookingfamily.com slash magic flavor dust, or you can go find it on there. And um, it has two parts of onion powder, two parts of garlic powder, one part salt, one part pepper. We just mix it together. And then we're reaching for one spice instead of four. Four. And we, do, yeah. we use it for everything. Everything. It really does help, so. Yeah, it's great. It's great flavor. We put it on, we've been making a lot of sauteed squash and zucchini. Uh, this is, we're gonna use three tablespoons of cumin. And since I'm doing this three times, I'm gonna go ahead and just take off this lid. Sprinkle that cumin on the chicken. This is gonna have so much wonderful flavor. I love the smell of cumin. It's just so warm and earthy uh, and it just adds so much flavor to everything. And I'm gonna just take the whole oh, lid off. I forgot. Those lids are kind of cumbersome sometimes. Um, okay, so three tablespoons of cumin, three tablespoons of chili powder, and one tablespoon of magic flavor dust. Okay, so there's our chili powder right in there. That's gonna add nice appetizing color to our chicken. And flavor. And flavor. Don't forget flavor. And Abigail's gonna show us how to cut up this French. onion super the easy French. way. I'm trying to remind myself because I cut it wrong sometimes. And well, it's okay. It's not a big well, deal. Like, it's, not, way. it's not wrong, but like it was not Frenching. Right. So. So if you prefer, uh, if your family is kind of onion phobic, you can cut them in smaller pieces and the little dices would disappear. But we're gonna show you, this is just a quick way to chop up an onion. Uh, if you are on a quick, busy uh, weekend, uh, weeknight when you just have a, you're really short on time. Yes, so don't forget your cut love. And uh, we're just going to, oh yes, keep your fingers away. And away from your knife, and we're just going to uh, cut off both ends. There's a sorry, a stem end and a root end, and we're going to cut off both ends. Normally, you would leave the root end on just to have something to hold on to, but this time we're going to cut off both ends, and then um, we're going to set those aside, and so, and then we're going to just cut right down the middle. And now it's really easy to peel. You're just gonna take off this layer and it just comes right off and then you don't have all the nasty peels. So now we're going to French and uh, like with dices, we're just going to cut in uh, like rays of the sun, 
column things like uh, you're going to just cut angles. Angles. There you go. Just straight down to so that your onion is kind of in little, your onion slices are in a little wedge shape. Yes. And that is Frenching. That's right. So. And then, and then you're just going to do that to the other side. Perfect. Right. Abigail <laughs> is a good onion slicer. So uh, gum, chewing gum or just the act of chewing somehow helps with the gas in the onions. Or, Mima said if you say, it's kind of silly, but she said if you say onion, 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 <laughs> onion, 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 like over and over while you're doing it, it helps. Has it helped? I haven't tried it yet. She hasn't tried it yet. Anyway, um, that can kind of help, and it's also a little incentive for my kids to want to chop up an onion <laughs> because then they get to have a piece of gum. It's kind of a little bonus. Okay, so I'm gonna sprinkle these uh, onions right over the chicken. And uh, again, if this is too much onion for you, actually, once it cooks, you hardly even notice it's in there. It's almost like um, the cooked onions on fajitas. And, but if it is too much, you can adjust this and add fewer or um, none at all if you want. Okay, so what I have here is just some plain old regular so salsa just... from the store. Uh, I went ahead and got mild salsa this time. Normally my family eats medium, but uh, this was a little bit spicy for the little girls uh, to do this full, full, full medium level heat on the salsa. So this is a, a mild version and this is about 24 ounces, but we're just gonna use about half of it. So we'll have a cup and a half of salsa in here. Uh, if your family likes spice, then go ahead and get um, go ahead and get whatever spice level you enjoy. Um, I think this would also be really delicious with a green chili um, and make just a creamy kind of a green chili salsa. We haven't tried it like that yet, but looking forward to doing that. Okay, so now I'm going to close the lid. We've added our liquid. And we're going to close the lid of the Instant Pot. We're just going to check our seal. This machine is an Evo, but if you have the older Duo model, you have to make sure that it's your in, uh, um, steam release valve is set to sealing. And um, that's just a good thing to always make sure of. And then I'm going to press cancel since I didn't set up the number of minutes earlier. And we're just going to press pressure cook. We're going to change it over to poultry and select. And now it's already set for 10 minutes on high. And if you want to adjust that time, like if you've got frozen meat going in, you just turn this knob or on older machines, I'm going to go ahead and the pressure's high pressure. I'm going to go ahead and press start on uh, older machines. You're going to adjust. Oh, I forgot something. Thank you. I forgot to put the pot and pot rice in here. I was just going with the chicken. Gotta do that. Gotta do that. Okay. Um, so we'll set that up in a second. Thanks for reminding me, girl. You're welcome. Okay. And then the, the sour cream goes in at the end or Greek yogurt. Okay. So we've got our pot and pot rice. And Abigail, do you want to show them how to do that? Sure. So um, for our family, we use 24 ounces of rice. Well, we're just going to do two cups So today. we're going to do two cups today. For simplicity. Normal. Normally we do. So the that, ratio so. for cooking rice in the Instant Pot is one to one, one part rice, one part water. And so we're doing two cups of rice, two cups, two of, cups water. of water, one tablespoon of butter. Right. Uh, we're going to do like teaspoon, somewhere okay. between a tablespoon and a teaspoon of butter. Okay. Uh, so these bags, like Abigail was telling you, this is a way that our family does some prep cooking ahead of time. Uh, we buy, uh, we have a large family, so we buy the giant bags, 25 or 50 pound bags at um, the, those big, big box. box stores, Costco, Sam's. And then we'll have a little session where we just bag up the amount of rice that we need for our family. And then these are kept in the freezer and we just get one bag out and dump it in. And so it's super easy, very streamlined. It makes it very simple to put on a pot of rice. We have a scale, the way that we measure this, 
uh, into 24 ounce portions is we just have a scale and um, then we weigh it on there and it just makes it super simple. And then putting on a pot of rice is almost a one minute job. Yep. On a Tuesday night. Just pour it in, pour your water in, and then That's right. turn it on. So okay, is that so two cups? this is um, I kinda eyeballed the one chicken. and a half. I mean, Why don't you measure okay. the water into here? Two cups. Two cups. So two cups of rice, two cups of water. If you want three cups, do three cups. Or just one cup and one cup. Whatever it is, one to one ratio. And then a little bit of butter, a little bit of salt. Okay, there you so go. there's two cups. Wait, set those aside. And, and then, then here's the rice petal if you want to give that a little stir just sure. to incorporate all that water. Do we need salt in here? Yes, we need salt. Okay, okay how much are we going to do? One teaspoon of salt. Awesome. So it's one, 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 one. Yeah. That's a great, great way to remember it. Yeah. So these little, uh, this little wooden scoop is a quarter, a uh, quarter, quarter teaspoon, teaspoon. Not a quarter cup. So she put four of those in. Um, and then I'm just going to... Open this. Do we have a butter knife? We don't have. Uh, we don't have a butter knife. You can just you could use the rice paddle. Oh, rice paddle. Okay. I'm all for just using whatever's at hand and not dirtying up something else. So there goes our butter. Okay. So it's we're showing melt. you. Um, last week we made pot and pot rice and we showed you using the Hatrigo um, rice uh, in the inner pot to do pot and pot. This time we're showing you how to do it yourself, how to set that up, and we'll show you the Hatrigo one when we take this out. And so um, if you don't have that awesome Hatrigo inner pot, I would encourage you to save up for it. It's fabulous, it's on Amazon, um, and it's very well made and a great tool. But if you, most everyone has this old corning ware, it fits perfectly inside the six quart and the eight quart. Um, it holds enough rice for, um, I think if we brimmed it up with three cups, we could probably fit enough for our family. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to show you how to make a foil sling so you can get this out at the end. Do we need a covering for this? We do not need okay. a covering for this because it's going to be inside the pot, completely surrounded by hot steam. And so the top of it does not dry out. So to make a foil sling, you're going to pull off some foil and you're just gonna fold it up long ways. And I actually usually keep this and reuse it a few times. And I'm wondering, I did it horizontal because it was the heavy duty kind. Yes, this will, see how these can act as handles and then these are not extremely hot. Uh, the foil is not extremely hot to grab, and I'm just going to set my trivet that came with the machine down on top of my chicken, and then I'm going to set this rice right on top of it, and these little handles will be here uh, to help me get this hot pot out when I'm finished. Okay, I'm going to make sure it's stable and it's not going to spill, and now we can now close we can it all up. On. Okay. There we go, and we're gonna make sure that seal is set to sealing, and we're gonna press our um, pressure cook button. This would also be manual on uh, some machines. We're gonna select poultry. We're gonna change the temperature, and like I was about to say on the older machines, you're gonna use the plus and minus buttons to change the, the time. You are gonna press the pressure level button or the adjust button to make sure the pressure is on high for dark meat like a chicken thigh um, or low for breast meat. And then you're gonna just press start to turn it on or if you have a, a, a Duo or a Lux machine that does not have a start button, you just wait 10 minutes or 10 seconds and it'll beep and start. I used to always try to press the button that was that I was Cancel, used to on my slow cooker because I had to press start on that and I kept trying to press that and it canceled, I canceled and you it had out. to start all the way over it. <laughs> so I had to make myself pause. Um, I had to make a little checklist and I my checklist is liquid, lid, valve, program, pressure, time, pause, pause. or, or start. press start. 
And uh, I actually have that checklist on our Fearless Newbie Instant Pot course to help people get started using their Instant Pot. And if you go to our website, you can sign up for the mini course, the free Fearless Newbie Instant Pot mini course at our website at thecookingfamily.com and uh, share that with your friends. And it's pretty fabulous. Yeah. If I do say so ourselves. Hopefully really helpful to people getting started on using the Instant Pot. So now we're gonna show you some guacamole. Oh yeah, and you can print that, that checklist. It's a printable on our course. So you can print it and I love to keep it right inside my cabinet door so that um, you can refer to it until you have it memorized. Uh, it's, it's on the free uh, Fearless Newbie Instapot mini course. So you can go there, print out that printable checklist and You'll help yourself not forget any steps as you're starting your Instant Pot. Yep. Uh, okay, so we're going to show you some guacamole that we like Guac. to make. It's one of our favorite things. Um, and it's very easy to make. And it uses no packets, only real ingredients. And it's super delicious. So what do you want me to okay, get out? Okay, so we're going to... So the first step in this is to make a pico de gallo. And I love saying that. So Pico de Gallo. Pico de Gallo. <laughs> so the kids have this fun song. Is it? I don't remember. Uh, Slugs and Bugs. Slugs and Bugs. Slugs and Bugs. Um, Pico de, ba de Gallo translates it, to yeah. Beak of the Rooster. Beak of the Rooster. Beak of the Rooster. It's a Sounds really kind of fun, fun song. You should look it up on Spotify. Okay, so we're going to cut our tomatoes yeah. like this. I want to dice them. And so I'm going to cut and I'm going to leave the stem end intact, just like we do with an onion. And we're going to vertically go down through our tomato and make slices just like this. And this holds it together so it's not all slipping around in my hand. And then I'm going to turn this 90 degrees and I'm going to do the same thing. And uh, notice this is a nice sharp knife so it's handling the tomato really well. Really encourage you to invest in a good sharp knife for your kitchen. Uh, it is a very valuable tool. Okay, so I'm now I'm dicing into nice small little pieces so that my pico will be kind of fine. We don't want huge chunks for this. And I'm going to just cut up this little one. And we'll put this in our pico bowl. And this also allows some of the seeds and juice to kind of come out on my cutting board in case I don't want all of it in there. Which and now we're going to do, do another you one. Want all of it in we don't that? really want all of it. It might get a little juicy. Um, and if you ever have a recipe that calls for uh, tomatoes that are seeded, uh, juiced and seeded, I'll show you how to do that. So again, cut the stem end, leave the stem end, cut your vertical slices, turn it sideways, do it again. And then at this point, if you want to. Uh, if your tomato recipe calls for juiced and seeded tomatoes, then you can just give this a little squeeze and those seeds will kind of come right out. And then your tomato is just a little bit drier and um, it won't be quite so seedy and juicy. And there you go. And see how easy that is? So I was gonna throw this top away anyway. To the chickens. To the chickens, because they love tomatoes, except tomatoes the are stem their part. favorite. Actually, they uh, eat the stem part. They do? I think they eat the stem. I think Miriam okay. said that they're not supposed to get the stem. So we try to take the stems off of the tomatoes and then um, toss in those ends, and they love it. Oh, yeah. We call it our chicken snack plate. <laughs> As we're going throughout the day, and we'll have these, and we'll be like, here, put these on the chicken snack plate. And then somebody will take them out to the chickens when they go visit. So, okay, so there's our tomatoes. And I'm gonna wipe my hands and I'm gonna wipe the board here because it's a little soggy with tomato, tomato seeds and juice. And there we go. Okay, and now um, the next ingredient, so that's just two basically Roma tomatoes. Those are my favorite ones to buy at the store if you don't have garden fresh tomatoes or if it's New Year's and you want tomatoes. And then uh, we're gonna do a tablespoon of chopped cilantro. It comes like this at the store. Um, if you have a 
so, so just pull off what you think is going to be about two tablespoons and I just go ahead and, and cut it up. I'll pull out the huge stems like this is a really huge thick stem. I'll pull that one out but the skinny little stems are really no big deal. They're not unappealing at all. They're flavorful. Also. They're flavorful. flavorful. They're good for you. Cilantro is actually super detoxifying in the body. So we try to eat as much cilantro as we can around here and we all love it. Um, also, if you have, this is a little trick from our favorite camp. Um, if you have just plain old jarred salsa and you just get a little cilantro and chop it up, put it in your plain old jarred salsa and it just brings it to life. It almost tastes fresh. And it's a fabulous little trick to, to brighten up your, your jarred salsa that you buy at, at Walmart or wherever. Okay, so the cilantro goes right in. This is about two tablespoons of cilantro. And then we're going to dice up some onion. Don't make me do that. I'll, I'll do the I'm onion. I'm not kidding. Are you, I mean, you can, but... Do you want to do the, um, the jalapeno? Or do you want to do the avocados? Avocados. Okay. <laughs> I don't She's going to show you how to do the avocados. So this time we're going to keep the root end intact because what I want to do is dice up little fine pieces of onion because I am not a huge fan of taking a big old bite of raw onion. And a lot of times I'll cut off this little hairy root part so I don't get roots all in my food and scooch those over to this side. And then I'm going to cut this in half and the amount of onion that we want is a half a medium onion and that's just about what we have here. Um, so we I'm always put that to the side. Um, another little helpful thing, if you will keep your leftover half of an onion in aluminum foil in the fridge, it doesn't stink up your fridge. It's like a miraculous way of um, keeping the onion smell from contaminating your whole fridge. You know, if you just wrap it in plastic or even sometimes if you put it in a plastic bowl, it will just, you'll open your fridge and it's overwhelming onion smell, but yeah. aluminum foil is I've the key actually smelled that before. to keeping that out. Don't do so, it. So <laughs> this time we're doing really fine dice. You know what, I'm gonna trade and do the bigger I thought half uh, I thought because so. we wanna save a little for on top of our oh, yes. uh, rice bowl here in a minute. I almost forgot. Okay, so I'm using the larger half of my medium onion so I can borrow just a few for garnish on top of the rice bowl. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut it in half like that and now I'm gonna cut down the rays of the sun just like Abigail did, but this time I'm not going all the way through that root end. I'm just cutting through the main part and leaving the root end intact. And that allows it to all hold together so that my onion's not falling apart on me. And now I want really fine little pieces because I don't like big chunks of raw onion. So I'm going to just be really slow and careful here and make them real skinny. And then we'll end up with some fine diced onion that is really great in the guacamole and the pico de gallo and on top of um the creamy salsa chicken and uh there has been an onion recall this week i don't know if that has affected anyone else but i researched our tomato or our onion that we bought and it was great it's not from the recalled place so we're good on that front okay so I'm going to put a few of these, actually I'm going to put about most of this in our gua, our pico bowl. And then I am going to put a little bit in another bowl. If you could grab me another little bowl for the re rest of these onions that are going to go on top of the creamy salsa chicken. Just for a little extra flavor and pop for the people who want it. Yes. And are you going to show us this? Sure. Okay, I'm going to grab you an extra towel. Oh, towel. Okay. For the avocado. Yes. So this is something, um, we're not pitting it right. We're just going to put it in the 
guacamole because the pits actually keep uh, your guacamole, your avocado from oxidizing. So, um, yeah, they help prevent it. Yes. Okay. Use this towel. So, yes. so you can use a towel. Can you use a You're cut gonna glove? You're going to use the or? cut glove too. Okay. Cut glove also. Have you but done this before? I have. Why don't I yes. Do? No, I have. Okay. I have done it. I was going to say, if you haven't, I'll do one and show you, and then you can. It's do hard one. to pit it though, so yes. I'm thinking okay, I'm I'll just going to get it out just with a spoon. Because that always helps for me. Okay. So, so here's how to uh, cut an avocado. Yes. So, uh, yes. So we're just going to, there's, uh, we learned this in school, there's longi no, longitude and latitude. Um, yeah. We're going to cut it on the longitude, on the longitude. <laughs> uh, not the equator, so the opposite of the equator. That's right. And she's going to be really careful. She, there's a big pit in there, and she's going to be really careful and rotate the avocado as she goes around. <laughs> now you can just flip it over. And then, so the pit is in there. So. This one is a nice, ripe avocado, which is pretty fantastic. You don't always find them nice and ripe at the yes. store. So what we're gonna do now to open it up is just twist it and then pull it off. And you'll have your avocado without the pit and with the pit. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna, whoop, that popped out. Popped out really easy, um, and so right. So we're gonna put the pits into our avocado, our mm -hmm. guacamole so that it does not oxidize. So, and then we're just going to get our spoon and- Okay, pause. So this little part, oh, I would yes. get that part out that kind of turned brown like a banana bruise and I would just uh, put that aside um, I'll take it okay so now we're going I need to spin back there you go and I'll, I'll do that same thing to okay. this so just if you've got a bruise like a banana just pull that off it actually doesn't taste bad it just looks looks not bad. so appealing yeah so now you're just gonna get your spoon loosen it out and then just put it in and you're gonna do that with all of them and it's pretty super easy, easy. yeah Okay, and now um, she's, okay, so we're gonna take the, just a regular potato masher, and that's what we're gonna use to mash up the avocado, and I'm gonna go ahead and get this lime going. Um, got a little guac, a little avocado on my hand. I'm gonna move this onion, so we have our cutting board back. Uh, the, one thing about guacamole is that it oxidizes, so you want to make sure you uh, keep the lime juice on it and or cover it with um, cling wrap, with plastic wrap, not the press and seal. Okay, so here's my lime, and I'm going to roll this around. If you'll keep it at room or have it at room temperature and roll it a little bit, it will um, give Get you a little juice. bit more juice. So I'm going to cut the lime in half, and then I'm just going to squeeze that over our guac, our over our avocado. I keep avocado, calling it avocado yeah, me too. guacamole. Uh, we also we're going to cut up our guacamole. Avocados. Uh, avocados are a great thing to dice up and put on top of your creamy salsa chicken, or, or just, just eat them plain. That's them my plain, favorite way. Add a I love salt, avocados. Little pepper. I actually so want to yummy. grow an avocado plant tree next year. Daddy Maybe. would love that. I Avocados so. are his favorite. Well, they're my favorite too, so. Okay, so we're going to do the juice of one lime all over our yummy avocado. Okay. Can I mash it? Yeah, uh, you can. I love mashing. It's my favorite. Yes. Well, stirring and mashing. Stirring Both. and mashing. I love stirring. So the lime juice is going to help keep the avocado from turning brown. And the lime juice smells amazing. so good. I just love fresh lime. Lime okay. and cilantro are so amazing together. They are so amazing. Okay, so you can mash that up. And then I'm going to get ready to chop up this little jalapeno. Okay, so... We have our three avocados and our lime juice and our pits in here. That's right. So she's just mashing right around the pits. Um, we like our guacamole a little bit chunky, so, so we'll probably stop. Um, that. You can pull some down from that side over there. But if you prefer it really smooth, 
then you can take out those pits and make it as smooth as you want and just put the pits back in. It just helps a little bit with the browning and then you kind of dip your chips around it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's our little jalapeno. Oh. Um, jalapeno. We mm -hmm. accidentally got jalapenos growing in our garden this year. Um, I received the bounty of a clearance, a bunch of clearance uh, vegetables and they were labeled sweet bell pepper and they turned out to be jalapenos. jalapenos. And they're quite spicy. They're spicy for jalapenos. So I'm just gonna chop it in half and I'm gonna pull the seeds out. I'm gonna put them in my trash bowl to keep these seeds from floating all over the place. Um, the seeds are the hottest part, so we're gonna get rid of that. And since um, this is a relatively small amount of guacamole, at least for our family. We can polish off a double batch of this, no problem. Oh yeah, one um, meal. I'm just going to use about a quarter of this jalapeno because the little girls don't like it super spicy. So we're gonna set this one aside and I'm just gonna chop up about a quarter Probably of this. Quarter, yeah. And I'm gonna chop it as skinny as I can so that I have as many little pieces of jalapeno as possible try to keep this a little bit straight and go down with my knife hee <laughs> turns out to be a little harder when it's and so tiny so and such why a small do you wear amount. gloves oh that's a great question I wear gloves because this jalapeno oil will stay on your hands forever and it seems like it doesn't matter how many times you wash them even with the Dawn dish soap that is supposed to take oil off um, and don't it Rub just, your eyes. Yeah, with do jalapeno. not rub your eyes with jalapeno on them or take out your contacts. Oh my goodness, it burns forever. Never um, done so that. So that's why I'm wearing gloves so that the juice of the jalapeno will not be on my actual hands. And another precaution that you could take is um, wearing safety glasses, safety goggles. Abraham and likes to gear up in the safety goggles. Yeah, when especially he when he's making poppers, he says he feels fun. like an evil scientist. <laughs> so, a um, mad scientist? Yes, yes. Okay, so we're going to put the jalapeno in our pico. So this, what I love about this recipe is that it doubles. You can make extra and have pico, or you can just um, mix it in with the, with the guacamole. So this is an excellent pico recipe. Uh, we also made homemade salsa by doing the same thing in our food processor and just processing it down a little bit more. And it made fabulous fresh salsa with our uh, garden tomatoes. Yes. Okay, so now we have this. Um, and this. I could use a little mixing spoon. Would you mind grabbing me a spoon? We uh, do. Oh, no, no Pico mind. de Gallo is just an awesome little... Um, garnish salad it's great to have for any kind of Mexican if you make carnitas um, we have a great carnitas recipe on our website and if you make carnitas this would be excellent to just top that so that's what this looks like when it's done and y'all I don't know if you've tried the there have store-bought options that are pre-prepared but when you make it fresh at home uh, it is so much better <laughs> So much better than at the store and it's not that hard and it's kind of fun when you do it with your kids it takes a little bit of extra time but if you have it for a special night so worth it yeah so here's the little bit of pico and I'm just gonna put a little bit in here so we have it for our um, just a little aside to put on top and then we'll put the rest right into the mashed avocado you know what? I forgot. You forgot two <gasps> things. Or three things. Were you going to do the garlic? Sure. I forgot all about the garlic, the wow. cumin, and the cayenne. So here's just a little bit of uh, cumin, ground cumin. Do we have a meat mallet somewhere? Mm. Oh, so this is half a teaspoon of cumin and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. This is just a little bit of cayenne pepper to lighten up the flavor, but not make it too, too spicy. I'll and just use my that in. glove and knife. Okay, so Abigail's going to take care of this garlic. We just have two little cloves of garlic this time. 
Normally we use eight, maybe ten. But yeah. Today it's just going to okay, be. Okay. So. Oh yes. Yeah. If you don't have a meat mallet, there's another way that you can uh, pound your garlic so that the peel comes off, and that is uh, getting your knife with your blade away from you and your cut glove, and keeping your fingers. Sorry. Yeah. Keeping your fingers up and away. You. Do you curl them? Yeah. You just kind of hit yeah. it with the so palm of it, your hand. So hit hand. it with the palm of your hand. And that just like that, and that breaks the skin. it. Excellent. Being very very careful. So if you don't have a meat mallet, that's another way, but a meat mallet is the way the to go. A meat mallet is our preferred tool. Yep. It's also very fun. Yes. But it breaks the skin open so that your garlic peels right off. The garlic skin peels right off. And this one is a little bit brown, so I'm just going to pull off the brown part. That's what I'm doing. And Abigail's going to chop, chop away. it. So there you this go. is just our <laughs> pampered chef's chopper. And we're just going to... <laughs> Super fun and look at just minces up that garlic really quickly, and mm -hmm. you want to uh, scrape this out because this has like a whole clove of garlic in it. Practically, practically, and so you just kind of scrape that out. I scrape. It just went flying. Darn. That off. All that goodies, goodies, goodies. Yes, and then I'll sweep this garlic up into my hand. If you have a bench. Um, scraper that's a great tool for picking up a bunch of garlic um, I don't mind my hand smelling like garlic some people do I guess I've gotten used to it um, smells amazing lime yes. garlic cilantro and we'll stir this up and then we're ready now to actually okay. mix this in to, with our avocado and you're just gonna use that masher right yes I love stirring. Stirring is really my favorite thing. Stirring and baking is my favorite thing to do in the kitchen. It's fun. Okay, and I think we did not yet put in the salt. Oh. Okay, so we're going to add just a half a teaspoon of salt. We like to use the pink Himalayan salt. Uh, you can use whatever kind you want, but if you have really fine salt, then it'll be a little bit less than this. There you go. Okay. So. And doesn't that look so delicious? I'm gonna yes. run and grab some cling wrap. Oh yes. And we'll show how to Sorry. store that. So we're just going to scrape it all down to the middle. Okay, and, and this is the cling wrap, just the old fashioned plastic wrap. And you, just tear off your piece and then you're going to press this all the way down on top. Don't leave it up on top. Don't leave it up on top of your bowl. You're just going to push it down so that it's actually laying right on top of your guacamole and that keeps the air from getting to oxygen. your yeah, the oxygen, oxygen. and the air That's from getting to your avocado. Um, so rather than leaving it if you leave it up on top of the top like you usually do for plastic wrap then the top of your avocado is going to turn a little bit brown, brown. still it totally still tastes edible. great but tastes great. it this looks looks much more great. appealing yeah. if you just put it flat down on top of there and then uh, you can uh, store it if you're going to eat it soon leave it out on the counter at room temperature it tastes much better but if you need to put it in the fridge stick it in the fridge like this and so, then are we eating this soon we, we'll eat it, eat it soon. You can leave it out. Awesome. Okay. Yay. We'll eat it soon. I think we forgot our little taste test, too. We did. Here. Sure. We're going to take that plastic wrap right back off for just a second. Just a sec. We got to taste it. Show you how good it is. Got to taste it. So you try it. Make sure we got enough salt in there and everything. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's great. Oh, yeah. It's like it's a... even better with chips. But I, I love finding a nutritious dip, and man, guacamole is just one of the most nutritious dips you could find to indulge in your Do have any chip great habits. Minutes. Or you're great. Teeth. Awesome. You're great. You're good too. Um, uh, chips are my downfall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if I eat them with guacamole, then it's almost like eating health food. Yep. Okay. Okay. Now, um, I think we are about ready. 
taste. Um, to taste. Could I get just a couple pieces of wet paper towel? I've got, I'm gonna wipe this off. Elijah has been very busy today getting things for us. Okay, so what are we gonna do next okay. with the chicken? Next with the chicken. Okay, that's a great question. So meat does best if you allow it to naturally release for about 10 minutes and it just comes out more tender and it doesn't get go. tough. 10 minutes. So we are two minutes away. We have a second pot over here, um, but we, um, the guacamole took plenty long enough and this yep. is so fast that it's just about done, ready for us to open it up. So, okay. Are we gonna do the Evo and not do any musical instant pot? So yeah, what do you I think we do? can do that. So um, I'm gonna show you one last thing. So we really like, um, if yes, if you did this with frozen chicken, just add two minutes to your uh, main cooking, main pressure cooking time. And so if it's, um, the normal pressure cooking time is 10 minutes for chicken thighs, eight minutes for chicken breasts. So just add two minutes to either one if your meat is frozen. So we have here some romaine lettuce. So we like to add this on top of the creamy salsa chicken uh, to just healthify it a little bit, add a little veggie, and then it's a one pot meal for your family. And so I'm just gonna pull off a couple leaves of romaine and I'll show you how we chop these up. It's very simple. And here we go. So I'm going to cut off these ends that are kind of tough. Just going to kind of go like this. You know, you could also, um, if you just want to go for low carb and not put it over rice, you could just take your uh, salsa chicken and put it in one of these like a little lettuce wrap. Boat. And it would also be fabulous. Or boat. It could be a little because it looks like a boat. Yes, it does look like a boat. So I'm going to cut this in half. I'm going to cut the main part of the stem out. You can eat that. I don't love to, just personal preference. Um, romaine actually has a lot of nutrients in it. And okay, now I'm going to just slice. And I like to make my pieces a little bit smaller than the traditional uh, like Caesar salad size. They're usually about half an inch or more. Um, I just like it a little bit smaller. So feel free to do whatever your personal preference is. So we're just gonna chop this up and I'm gonna fold this so it's a little bit less to wrangle. And if you're just joining us, we have our two, our one instant pot, our instant pot full of uh, creamy salsa chicken and pot and pot rice and we made guacamole here and mommy is cutting up romaine lettuce mm -hmm. for the for on top uh, for of the, the creamy chicken. salsa chicken and rice bowl. Yes. Okay. So we have this and then we have some other toppings that we like to put on top of it. I'm going to just put all this aside here. And in just a second we're going to show you actually we can release this and we'll show you what to do next. So okay. here's all our toppings. Well, I'm gonna oh, cut up the right. chicken real yes. quick. So I'll okay. put this here. So we're gonna release the pressure by pressing vent. And there shouldn't be too much pressure left in here for, because it's been releasing quite a little while. And, but we're just gonna wait for that pen to drop and it's gonna be yummy. Fantastic. Oh, I, you know what? I do need to show them this one because oh. this one has the Hatrigo insert. Yes. So this one has been releasing for an hour and 11 minutes, one, one, which one. is totally fine. There's nothing about this that's going to uh, overdo. So sometimes I'll start a meal earlier in the day and just um, let it sit. It's, if it's something that the ingredients are not going to overcook with. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this handle up. This is the Hatrigo. Is it hot? instant pot insert. It's a little bit warm, so I'm going to use a towel to pull this up, and I need a plate for that. Okay, there you go. Okay, and then uh, could you grab me one more plate? So this is our rice, and so the great thing about this Hatrigo 
insert is that it has a, a handle so you don't have to mess with the aluminum foil and then you push it down and then it has this little handle and you can open up your rice and you can see that the rice is perfectly cooked it's nice and moist and just fabulous so we're going to put the rice in our bowl in just a second but i'm going to keep the lid on for a little while while we take care of our chicken okay so now is this our saving this plate? is for the chicken okay awesome. so the next step is to remove the chicken from the pot because you will, you're going to cut the chicken up. Now, it, um, do you want me to move this? You can if, if that will be helpful. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to use my tongs. These are a clean set of tongs from what I put the chicken in with. And I'm just going to fish out each chicken piece. And then we're going to chop these up on the cutting board. That and looks then amazing. Abigail, is going to add the, the sour cream. Yes. Actually, ours is Greek yogurt that we made here from our cow's milk. We showed yes. a video of how to make that a couple weeks ago, so you can find that. Um, it's very simple to make in your Instant Pot. I don't think I ever would have made yogurt without the Instant Pot. In fact, when I first got it, I thought, well, I'll never use the yogurt button, but, um, I may as well get it, you know, for t like ten more dollars. But and now we use it all the time. And you can proof your bread in it. Any <laughs> bread that you make, right. you can just proof your bread. Okay, so you can Do go you ahead and stir okay. the Greek yogurt into so the this sauce. So this is one and a half cups of Greek yogurt, or you can use sour cream. We substitute with Greek yogurt. And this is what lot. makes it creamy. Creamy. So. Put that over there, and do we have a spoon for this? Um, why don't you use the chicken tongs? Your Where'd mom. they go? I'm holding them. That's why she can't use it. Sorry. Uh, I will a spoon. use like this. Okay. Work. So, and I'm uh, Abigail's gonna swirl that yummy, creamy <laughs> sour cream or Greek yogurt in. You can watch it change color. That's why I love stirring. You can watch it blend stirring in. Stirring is really fun. Okay, so I'm gonna chop up this chicken. Um, as a mom, I love to go ahead and chop up the meat on the cutting board instead of having to do everything to serve the meal and then still have kids' plates to cut the meat at. So I just find it so much easier to do it on the cutting board. And I'm cutting it across the grain. See these long, strands of meat. I'm cutting it across there to shorten those long fibers and that just makes it easier for everyone to chew up and more I think more appealing um, because then it's just yummier. Okay so we're going to put this back in the pot a little at a time. Can I start? Uh, sure. Yay. Okay and then I've got a couple more pieces of chicken here that I'm going to chop up. It smells like a Mexican restaurant in here. I love it. So yummy. Yes. And this is just such an easy dish to make. Um, it goes together really quickly and easy for everyone to eat. And people can kind of put on what they want and leave off what they want. So it's great for a variety of eaters, levels of pickiness or what have you, uh, because you can just eat this. And here's another thing. You can just eat it just like this and not put any of the toppings on it. Um, and it's still, and it's still delicious. really yummy. Okay, so now we've got that all mixed in. And I'm gonna pour this yummy juice back in. Oh yes, and the onions. And the little onions. On and there are peppers in there from the salsa. So that's great. And now I'm going to set this aside. And okay, Do one here, hour. Oh, yeah, yes, I'm going to trade you cutting boards, I think. Okay. There we go. Now we're this doing one a cutting quite board. Quite juicy from that chicken. Cutting musical cutting musical boards. cutting boards. Except they're not really musical. No. Okay, they're, ready? Yes. Swap it out, girl. 
Okay, so now we can serve up our rice. Yes. And serve, oh, serve up our. Oh, yeah. Our bowls. For our rice bowls. It's rice bowls. That's right. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, I love this Hetrigo because it has a lid. You can cook anything. Uh, if you anything you want to do pot in pot in your instant pot, you can do it in here. If you uh, have a lasagna, or if you want to make um, I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys like to cook in your pot and pot? I haven't done tons of pot and pot because we have a large family, and it's not super practical um, size wise. Okay, so here goes our rice, and I'll make Abigail a little bowl so she can doctor hers up however she wants. You always say doctor yours doctor up. Doctor it up. Okay, so there's the rice, and oh. I'm going to reach for a spoon here to yeah. serve up our creamy salsa chicken, and here it goes. There we are. Oh, that looks so so yummy. Smells so good. Yes, 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 yes. I'm just going to put everything on. Are you putting everything I'm on? I'm putting everything on. That's how I like it. She is a foodie. Foodie. She likes it all. Okay, oh so I'm going to put on a little bit of romaine on top. Then mm -hmm. it can be kind of Follow my salad on top of there. Oops, sorry. And I'm going to do just a tiny bit of raw onion. Love that. Tiny bit. And I don't love raw onion. That's the only thing. Yeah. But just get a few pieces. It's just not my favorite. Some yummy diced tomatoes. And there you go. Yummy, yummy. All of it is yummy. And some sour cream or Greek yogurt, depending on whatever you have. If you use Greek yogurt, you kind of get more, I don't know, nutrition points. But we're... We're big sour cream fans around here. And then a little cheese on top. Some cilantro. And then maybe finish it off with a little bit of that pico that we set aside. Oh, yes. Yum. Even though everything's already on there, this one has, uh, I don't know, just looks pretty. I think we doctored it up pretty good. We did. I think we did great. And I think I want to eat this. <laughs> you want to eat it? I do. Okay. I do. So creamy chicken salsa rice bowls. And now we're going to have a little taste test. With the rice and the creamy salsa chicken. Yes. Um, it just is a great, easy way of doing another variety of chicken and rice. Yes. Such a yummy, yummy food. Good another food. thing that would be great on this would be beans. Sprinkle some beans in there. Okay, I'm going to get my bite ready. Mm. Creamy salsa. Mm hmm. Good. Yummy. Oh my goodness. Love it. Awesome. So, thank you so much. We're so glad you've been here today joining us for creamy salsa chicken rice bowls and our yummy guacamole. We should put some of that on top. <gasps> we should. We'll do that in a minute. We'll do that later. <laughs> Um, I have a little piece of cilantro in your teeth. In my you teeth. You okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the danger of the taste test, right? Do I? You're good. Awesome. Okay. So we would love it if you would go to our uh, website and check it out. We've got all these recipes and more on there. They're family friendly recipes using real food ingredients. And we show ideas of how to uh, cook it with your family and what, the, what stages and ages kids can do things. Um, so go to our website. That's thecookingfamily.com. Also, like us on Facebook. We're The Cooking Family. Uh, Facebook.com slash The Cooking Fam. And so find us there. Like us. Share us with friends that might find this um, content helpful to them. And... Um, we hope you guys will have a great week and remember your family can cook and enjoy great meals together. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next Thursday.
Bye. Bye.